The guy crossed the median, ran across the highway to get away from police, and that pursuit ended here with the suspect on the ground and stun gun prongs coming out of his clothes. So they're working to get this truck out of the embankment. But then this is the real serious one that we have to talk about because this truck was engulfed in flames about an hour ago. Very serious crash. The driver of this truck walked away with only head injuries. But this is the cab of the truck beyond recognition. Parents, students, teachers begin showing up at Udawa High School. At least one parent has already told me the lack of communication is, quote, disheartening. You see there's a suitcase here as well. This is a gentleman from Knoxville, and he's trying to get to the airport. The airport's in Atlanta. I can tell you from a police source who I just spoke with on the scene that their police officer who was involved in this shooting is said to be in stable condition. Four people were able to get out of the house with the help of Chattanooga police. It's a heroic story and I want to read off their names. It has some paperwork that all the nurses will fill out. It has some swabs and it holds other evidence like clothes or bed sheets, anything you want to send in. And the excitement is real here in Los Angeles. It's actually one two punch from East Tennessee. You have Jordan Smith uh, getting first place, but then you have Emily Ann Roberts from Knoxville coming in second. Channel 3 did break this story coming up. Dan Kennedy did. A lot of the media now scrambling to get it. A 911 caller to a Catoosa County dispatcher losing her job. The dispatcher lost their job. Bizarre story and disturbing one as well. But it's what she did after receiving that call that's putting a spotlight on the privacy of 911 calls. Here's Dan now with the very latest on this story. Dan I spoke with this man who called 911 in December. He needed help. He needed it fast. But Jen Latrice never envisioned his medical emergency would be posted on social media. 911, where's your emergency? 911, where's the emergency? You might expect a phone call between you and a 911 dispatcher would remain private. Ron Darnell and Ringgold certainly did. And I called to get emergency help, and I almost died that day. Darnell called 911 before Christmas with what he considered to be an embarrassing medical problem. He never thought details of that call would be shared on Facebook by the Catoosa County dispatcher who answered his call for help. It was a screenshot of my 911 call, giving out all the details, why I was calling with my name on it, my phone number, the address, everything's on it. Holly Douse was Communication Officer of the Year in 2013. Now she's fired for sending this picture to Facebook friends, writing, a call I just took. We'll blur out the private information, but she didn't. Name, address, number, the medical issue, all of Ron Darnell's personal information she shared with friends in a Facebook group chat. How many people she sent it to, I don't know. How many of those people sent it out to somebody else and how far out on the Internet this is, I have no idea. Catoosa County officials began investigating the allegations this week, found them to be true, and fired Dows Friday morning. There's this thing called HIPAA, which guarantees that our medical records remain private, and it is a huge privacy concern for him, a huge HIPAA violation, and a huge problem for the 911 center down in Georgia. Chattanooga attorney Stuart James, who has no connection to the case, said this is a county and federal matter with the possibility of a lawsuit and even criminal charges. 911 is a call center that we must rely on to keep information confidential and to communicate that information to law enforcement officials only. And she has violated the public trust. Darnell wonders how often Dows has violated the public's trust in the nine years she's worked for the county. 911, where's the emergency? Making him weary of the next call for help. Also spoke with the county manager Friday afternoon. He says Dallas has committed similar offenses in the past before. She'd been warned about it, though none of those were quite to this severity. It took 11 hours and repeated calls to get a salt truck to treat an icy portion of Hickson Pike last March. And a Channel 3 investigation discovered road crews only arrived after a driver hit that patch of ice and died. Well, this month's long investigation includes audio recordings from deputies asking for help. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Dan Kennedy and investigative producer Beth Berger went to TDOT for answers. It's a story you'll see here only on 3. Well, it's going to be a while before it gets above freezing, so the morning hours still going to be icy in places. Some patchy areas of ice where some of the water was running over the roadway and froze overnight, so that's out there. The warnings for overnight ice began Thursday night. Forecasters knew Friday morning's commute could be dangerous. And by 3 a.m. Friday, a deputy on patrol saw trouble firsthand. He was cautioning the 9200 block at Hicks, and there's ice all over. I've already asked for sand. 
This curvy part of Hicks and Pike near Lakeside was a sheet of ice, and deputies wanted it treated fast, so they called TDOT. Two salt trucks were on standby that night in Chattanooga. TDOT Smart Land Knoxville, how may I help you? Hey, this is Sandra at Hamilton County again. The 9200 block of Hicks and Pike needs sand and salt. It's pretty bad, and rush hour is coming up. Now, you called in earlier about this, right? I think this one was called in about six hours ago. All right, we'll let them know. Two calls to TDOT, but not a single salt truck showing up to treat this section of Hickson Pike. So it stayed icy for hours. And by 7.30 Friday morning, deputies' worst fears were realized. 9113 Hickson Pike. Have a head-on collision, the Honda Court versus a Mazda Miata. 64-year-old Joe Dempsey was on his way to work when he hit a patch of ice and crossed the double lines hitting another car with a mother and her child. It appears to be somewhat serious. They survived, but Dempsey died, and ICE was to blame. We were doing the best we could, but we had not gotten a call. We, we don't have a record of any call, any time. Jennifer Flint, spokesperson for TDOT, says they have no record of the county requesting a salt truck, but radio traffic obtained by Channel 3 proves otherwise. I'm calling the state first. You got a smart way in Knoxville, how may I help you? That call went to Knoxville's 24-hour TDOT dispatch center. Officials admit a salt truck should have been dispatched immediately. All right, we'll let them know. All right, thanks. Thank you, thank you very much. There may have been a, a bit of a communications breakdown in this case between Knoxville and Chattanooga, I don't know. TDOT was dispatched a third time to the 9200 block of Hickson Pike. This time, they went and treated the ice, but it was too late for Joe Dempsey. Crews showed up half an hour after he was killed. And I just hate that, you know, that we, we didn't get out there, but uh, that we, you know, we didn't get the call. And as soon as we got the call, we, we went. Adrian Harris, call for Adrian. Just like any other Thursday team dinner, Baylor football coach Phil Massey highlighted a senior. This week, Adrian Harris. Tell everybody where you're from. From Bronx, New York. Adrian knew he wanted out of the Bronx, where gangs ruled, and he was once robbed. And football was his escape path to boarding school at Baylor. Adrian Harris! But through three seasons of touchdown celebrations, big wins, and crushing losses, something has been missing. His mom, still in the Bronx, has never seen him play at Baylor. You're oh, three years. Has anybody seen my boy? Oh, no. <laughs> Until this week. <laughs> Adrian had no idea some of his teammates' parents chipped in money and paid for his mom's trip to Chattanooga. She has not seen him play at Baylor since he's been here live. So, Adrian, this is worth a couple of touchdowns tomorrow. <laughs> I've just, I miss him so much, but I wasn't expecting to see him this soon, so I'm just so happy. I really appreciate it. I'm still going to go in the game the same, with the same type of mentality, same enthusiasm, but um, it's, it'll be a little bit more fun than it is now to know that my mom is in the crowd and then I'll be able to just have a good time and be able to play for her. Playing for a mom who wanted a better life for her son, a life Adrian seems to have found in Chattanooga. Dan Kennedy, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.